Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women's Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation. So sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. Hey friends, hey, it's Lisa from Black Women's Stitch and the Stitch Please podcast. And as I say every week, this is a very special episode, but this episode is especially, especially special because if you're not a Patreon subscriber and really for real, why are you not? You are missing out on me in a crown talking to the Jasmine Leffler, who is the founder and creative genius behind Black Fay Day. So this is going to be a conversation about magic, black girl magic, black folk magic, mermen, merfolk, fairies, enchantments, and all things Black Fay. And you will not want to miss it. Jasmine. Thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome, Jasmine LaFleur. We are so grateful to have you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today on the Stitch Please podcast. (laughs) Thanks for having me back. I always love coming to visit. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. And so much has happened since you were last here. I mean, I just feel like I, I was lucky enough to get on your calendar, girl. I mean, like, really, it is so tight. You have a lot going on. So when we last spoke, you had just established what has, I think, rapidly become a global Black holiday of Black Fay Day, which is the second Saturday in May. That's how you can remember it. The second Saturday in May is Black Fay Day. And what has happened in the interim? Or maybe what has not happened in the interim? You have had so many things happen. What has been um, some of the most memorable things that has happened to you since we last spoke? Oh man, since we last spoke, well, we had our fairy tale gala um, in Texas in a big old castle, and it was some of the most magical moments of my life. Uh, even my mom and brother and some cousins came down, and they even bought tickets, which I was like, oh, that's so sweet that oh they my actually you know, purchased. Oh, them. I love that. But yeah, it was a family affair at the castle and I just um, I hope I can show you more there will be more you have to see uh, yes so, yes um, when the holiday comes but it was definitely a magical time uh, unbelievable time so you were able to create an oasis of beautiful magic for black folks at a castle in Texas yes <laughs> if, if that's not black girl magic I do not know what is <laughs> Literally black girl magic. <laughs> it really absolutely is. First of all, who knew Texas had castles? I did not. Yeah, I had no idea. I was asked, I had a friend that um, partnered with me in designing and finding venue and things like that. She's from Sleeping Dragon Productions in Texas and does wonderful events as it is. And I was like, okay, me and Alexis need to team up. So we did. Yes. And she's an amazing um, designer, event designer and uh, producer. And I remember sitting down with her and she goes, okay, if money wasn't an option, you know, what would you want to do? And I started describing everything. And I didn't think I would have that kind of freedom to just imagine and create. And we did everything on my list except for one thing, which is incredible (laughs) on a budget. Black girl managing is really real (laughs) because there's no way uh, that all that happened should have happened. uh, But it did. Um, But I only had one thing on my list that I didn't get to do. And I'm still very grateful and in awe that it all happened. And please don't tell us what it was that you didn't get to do because I am convinced that you will get to do it soon at another Mm. event and that I want to be surprised. So um, don't say nothing now because I want to see it. Yeah. Don't, don't table it too far. Don't, don't send it away. Just say, you know, this is on the, this is on the next time round list. This is, Mm. this is for the, this is the, this is to be done list, not to put away and forget, but what amazing exercise in faith, 
mm-hmm. in, cre- in faith in oneself, in belief, in a vision, to be presented with the choice. What would you do if money was no object? That can be a really scary question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what were some of the things that kind of scared you when you were like, or what were some of the things you had to kind of think through when you were given the opportunity to dream without limits? Oh, man. It's very hard for me because I'm very much a fairy who doesn't attach herself to material things and money. So it's hard to try to... Like, I understand logically, hey, things cost money, girl. But yes. at the same so time. So I've heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> they keep to, telling me. I, yeah, like you said, giving, being allowed that space just to say, throw your imagination to the wind and be a kid again. Um, I think that was the biggest challenge for me. But once I tapped into it, and really saw how she was like drinking it in and asking all the right questions. I I really felt comfortable. But I think the thing I was most surprised to see happen was, and the thing that I was really most anxious about was to be able to draw in and collaborate with more creators in the community. I'm like, well, people, you know, have to travel and they have to have hotels, you know, I'm like trying to be as reasonable and, accommodating as I could be. But when you're in community, you know, people step up. And so everybody got paid, (laughs) you know, there were no problems. Um, Everyone got along. They, they really expressed themselves and gave us their hundred percent best. And I'm the most proud of that, even though it was the most challenging part, but I'm most proud of being able to have so many uh, incredible talents and, even vendors, our vendors were incredible. Wow. And this is what we mean when I say community is not a commodity. Oh, no. It's, it's a necessity for sure. It is an absolute vital necessity. And if you think that that a community is something that you can do so that you can build your own personal wealth, that's just, that's not it. That's not it. That is Ooh, not no. it at all. <laughs> It's such a it's such an exercise in abundance, what you are describing for us and the idea that you were invited to dream big and that your dreams came true is an inspiration for all of us. And what a powerful reminder for you as a big kind of boost beneath your sails, like a, a boost that's like, hey, Jasmine, you know, we did this, girl. We did. Remember when we thought? Remember when? Remember when? That's and now hard for here me we too. are. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is that hard for you? Uh, I don't take anything for granted, but I always feel like I want to give more and I want to do more for the community. I feel that's given me so much. So it's hard for me to be in the moment and be like, whoa, wait, I did this <laughs> or we did this. You know, I'm always like checking it off the list like, ah. We did it. It was successful. Everybody's happy. I can relax and and just frame it. It's on the wall. You know. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You have built this beautiful and wonderful event. And now here you are going from, from Texas, from the castle, now to family reunion. Black family reunion. And fa- it's fa- family is spelled or family is spelled F A E M I L Y. Fame. I think I'm spelling that right. But yeah. Faye is core for the word um, family. And so talk about what is a family. Tell us about a family, please. Yeah. And how um, and, and how you have grown from this event, this gorgeous event that sounds amazing in Texas to now this, which is happening all over the all over the place. Yeah. Faye, for those that may not know, uh, the definition that I always reference is uh, that Faye are uh, mythical humanoid creatures. So that can be anything from fairies to um, like uh, dragons to uh, elves, you know, Um, it's that kind of mythology. And every culture has spirit, you know, nature spirits and fantastical beings in their folklore and mythology. So um, 
you know, I encourage people to, you know, tell their stories and share stories uh, with the people around them so they can kind of tap into that fairy tale vibe. With that being like the forefront of, you know, our fantasy, I started having fairy tale galas, which were like a big ball with lots of magical beings. Uh, oh, our sounds so amazing. <laughs> yes. Our first one was a uh, fairy tale gala land versus sea. So I wanted people to think about what kind of magical creatures they would dwell, you know, would they dwell in the sky? Would they dwell on land? Would they swim like mermaids? So I had mermaids. I had knights. I had all kinds of creatures. Oh my there. gosh. Um, oh, it's so fun. Yeah. And then of course the next year we had the castle event because our theme was royals. And I always try to give a theme to give everybody a starting point if they're just, you know, yes. dipping their toe into fantasy. And it's not required. It's really just a place to get started. And the thing I kept hearing over and over at these events was like, this feels like family. Like, it feels like we've known each other forever. And that's been oh. the sustaining, you know, feeling uh, each year. And so yes. I thought, okay, well, this is the family reunion. Like, this is all of us oh. coming together <laughs> um, oh. this year. Yeah, I just wanted to rekindle the magic that we felt the first year when everything was spontaneous yes. and organic and uh, us reaching out to each other in beautiful ways. And it, the magic is starting already. So I'm really happy that this theme really inspiring uh, people to organize, to create, to imagine, to explore. Uh, it's just been exciting to watch happen. <laughs> I am just delighted to hear this. And I am I'm so excited to hear about the way that you began in a quite organic way. And now you are in some ways scaling, some would call it scaling, that you are going from a, a smaller place or single event to a different series of events leading up to an even bigger event. It's just like you're building more love. You're building more <laughs> magic or maybe magic begets magic. Um, I'm not sure. What do you think about that formula? Do you think magic begets magic? And this is a good explanation to explain how this has grown for you? Or would you describe it some, in a different way? Hey, friends. Hey, I know you're enjoying the audio version of Stitch, Please. And thanks so much for listening. But you're missing out on all the great stuff going on behind the scenes. That's why I'm inviting you to join our Black Women Stitch Patreon. For as little as $5 a month, you can see all the video versions of the podcast. Plus, you get some amazing swatch cards. You know how much I love these swatch cards. Look, look, see how cool these are? I Oh wait, you you can't you can't see them because you are not yet on the Patreon. So, when you join the Patreon, you'll be able to see this me showing you these amazing cards. We also have some great perks at the other tiers like discounts, swag, office hours, and more. Don't be the last sewist in the group now. Head over to patreon.com slash black women stitch or click the link in the show notes and become a Patreon supporter today. We truly cannot do this without you. So thank you so much. Oh man, it's like, it's contagious. It is yeah. so electric. I mean, anytime I'm in public and I've got the full fantasy garb on, people's eyes twinkle and, oh. you know, everyone's curious from the smallest babies to the most grown adults, you know, everyone wants to talk to the fairy. You know, it's organic. It's, it's, it's a ripple effect. Anytime someone sees a Black person uh, living a carefree moment, um, living joyful moments, and makes people curious and start to wonder. And some people say, I want that too. Let me go get my wings or, you know, <laughs> let me go yeah. read something or let me get back to that book I was writing. You know, it inspires everyone in different ways. And so I think that's the momentum that's driven it to what it is today. 
That is such a great description about the way that it builds almost like a snowball or like the way that pollen can get dispersed among plants in order to be spontaneous and to kind of to grow. And that's what you're doing with with Black Fay Day. Like it's not just a day. It's it's really not just one single thing. It's one single thing that produces other things and other things and other things. Can you talk about this year's event, the family reunion? And I think I read that there's pre, pre-events pre that are coming and that there's a series of things that are happening across the country and in some other countries as well. Talk about the schedule for this year's event. Yeah, I love collaborating. I love meeting people. I love cheering for everybody. I'm everyone's cheerleader and everything makes me excited. Um, so in November last year, I put up on our website an uh, application for collaboration. And I thought, you know, if anybody wants to do something uh, for next year, here's my idea. Like, let me know what you think and we'll get started. And so I closed the application around January, February this year. And a lot of people had applied with unique and amazing ideas. Like I knew was going to happen. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to know what's going to happen until I see everything right. together. And so I didn't want to pick like just one, um, one creator to highlight. I thought, well, at a family reunion, you invite, you send out all the invitations and, you know, you pick a place and the whole family comes in. And a lot of people felt, you know, left out when they couldn't travel to the fairy tale galas. Um, and so I thought, no, there's enough of us around where you can find that same magic in your own neighborhood. So I put up a whole schedule of events and, you know, uh, Black Friday falls around Mother's Day weekend. So sometimes it's hard to get everything coordinated at the same time. But also um, regionally, a lot of people mm. wanted to make sure that they were booking at the same time so that everyone could get to the right places when they needed to. So we right. have programs that start um, this weekend, April 20th, and will finish around May 18th. And so there's wow. about, yeah, <laughs> there's about 17, there's over 17 events over, you know, that span around eight different states or more. It's it's starting to even, I'm starting to get even more. <laughs> That's about three weeks. That's about three weeks of events. Yeah. Leading up to three weeks of events, eight different states. Two and countries. <laughs> two countries. Yeah. Oh. It's been a lot of planning and conversations and, uh, coordinating. It's like herding cats at times, but <laughs> it's working out and I'm excited to see uh, all the magic that's happening. People are so excited. It is something about which to be very excited. I think this is just fantastic. I wanted to ask, why do you believe it important for Black Fay Day to exist? Why is it important that Black girls and women and men and adults and children get to play and indulge uh, in the fantasy, the cottage core, the enchantment that yeah. fantasy offers? Well, I feel like Black people, especially in the diaspora, have been cut off from so much of our mythology and fairy tales and things like that. And we've had to make up what we could, you know, and draw inspiration from what we could. And I mm -hmm. think it's important to rekindle um, that sense of wonder and imagination because fantasy is the crown jewel of any civilization. It really is. People are very protective of their stories. They're very protective of their mythologies. And for good reason, it explains the things that you value, the things that you can't explain, uh, the things that you can, like faith and love mm -hmm. and community. So it's important that we have those sharing of uh, stories because it's not only intergenerational, but it keeps us energetic. It keeps relationships uh, connected, improves your brain function. There's like science behind this to the point where we have uh, Naya Singletary. She's a mental health therapist, our 
Thera Ferry, <laughs> I like to call I her. I love that. <laughs> and she's a doctoral uh, candidate and doing, you know, a study on Black adult play and the benefits of creating and exploring that. So, I mean, we're peer reviewed now. So I <laughs> definitely love it. Out there and, uh, oh explore. my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is so wonderful. Now for folks who want to, um, to get started, how and where do you recommend folks find um, their beginnings of their costumes? If someone is totally new and they don't know how to, buy wings or to find elf ears in their color or all of these things. How do you recommend folks get started to build out um, a particular look? And is there a theme for this year's family reunion? Uh, Family reunion is the overall theme. And the way I described it, it was like maybe 90s cookout feeling, you know, I I think I told someone it's like a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but with wings, (laughs) you know. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so that's an easy starting place. We we can all kind of visualize it if that's the route you want to go, something modern, or if you want to go super ultra high fantasy and look like a medieval, I don't know what, wizard, (laughs) go for it. I think the beauty of Black Bay Day is that, yeah, there are cosplayers and people who uh, do lots of costuming in general who participate. Mm. Um, there's no one character that you need to, you know, emulate. You can really uh, just create whatever you feel. And so when people ask me, how do I get started? I, I have to tell them it's very important that you you rekindle your relationship with your inner child. You have to start there and ask yourself, you know, what kind of magical being you are and to affirm it because affirmations push us to do amazing things, you know, in the 60s and 70s, it's I'm black and I'm proud and I'm, you know, I'm black and I'm beautiful. Well, now we're black and we're magical and black magic is real. (laughs) So I really hope that people walk around and, you know, with that affirmation and kind of get a feel of it. You're going to start walking different. People are like, oh, I know that I'm a, like people will start describing themselves right away. Oh, well, I'm this, uh, you know, snake person with claws and I'm feisty and I'm this. And so it's fun to have those conversations of what kind of magical being they see themselves as. So start there, start journaling, you know, is a great tool. Uh, Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, Start journaling, talking to that inner voice and see uh, what kind of person you would like to show or introduce us to. (laughs) Oh, that is so wonderful. Jasmine, thank you so much for that. Let me ask you our favorite last question. It is this, the slogan of the Stitch Please podcast is that we will help you get your stitch together. Jasmine (laughs) LaFleur, the founder and creator of Black Fade Day. What advice would you give to us to help us get our stitch together? You have to start. You have to get started. You have to stitch something. Uh, Not tomorrow, not next week. You have to get started now. And I think taking those little steps uh, will definitely get you to the finish line way sooner than you even imagine or expect. Because once you get freedom to just create, uh, you're going to definitely stumble into something amazing. So don't hesitate. Trust yourself. It, it is going to be a learning process of learning to trust your your intuition and that creative abandon. <laughs> but you've got it. Yeah. Get your stitch together. <laughs> Wonderful. Jasmine LaFleur, thank you so much for being with us today on the Stitch Please podcast. We are so grateful for the chance to speak with you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me and have a wonderful Black Bay Day if you do participate with us. Oh, one more thing. You just have to use the hashtag, hashtag Black Bay Day on May 11th this year to participate. So if you're working on something and don't even get finished, post it anyway. Perfect. Hashtag Black Bay Day. Yep. You've been listening to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. 
We appreciate you joining us this week and every week for stories that center Black women, girls, and femmes in sewing. We invite you to join the Black Women's Stitch Patreon community with giving levels beginning at $5 a month. Your contributions help us bring the Stitch Please podcast to you every week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And come back next week and we'll help you get your stitch together. Thank you.